Uh, it's a poem called, There is No Library for What I Know of Books. One. The geography of a sand castle is not the same as the geography of a wave. Some may think the wave has a grander geography. This I cannot promise. I cannot promise much. But today I can promise you I am thinking maps made of sand. Certain a book is a kind of geography. Last week Dave sent me his. I took it on a trip to Italy. Italy is one of my geographies. You could say I read Dave's book with my Italian face. And that face, like Dave's, has its own geography. I only ever see Dave's face by mail. His geography is that far from mine. Our geographies once crossed in Syracuse where our adult maps were made and cooling lava shaped the land. And like that, we have cooled. Now we lie on sediment and silt. Dave's book had me in a Syracuse when I lost it in the men's room, and then it was gone, and goodbye to all that. And this missing became important to me. For the next few months it was an omen, and if I stumbled and fell, if I cut my thumb, I would think of Dave's book and how it was a sandcastle collapsed in a wave. Two. After my wife leaves, I think of the book cawing like a magpie. She will not promise, but I know her geography is no longer mine, and I have a face she will only visit. I am sure the book has a new skin around it. The water of the book, the kiss of the book, has new desires, and it left as my Syracuse face has left, and can only be found in mail and in the distance of all the waves, all the shores, all the shores with no waves, all the waves with no shores, all the faces that have waved at my shore. And the geographies only get bigger. I promise every day the ocean is deeper. The geography of ice caps melting and the style of a sandcastle to stand. And I know how a lost geography can return. The geography of a lost pendant, a lost wallet, a love. The geography of her neck. I cannot promise, but this is not impossible, except often you return to an old geography with a new face. Three. Maps on top of maps on top of maps, translucent and inaccurate, but a palimpsest nonetheless. And all the time, reading Dave's book, I was in a Syracuse where the ocean never arrived and our faces never departed. Uh, this next poem is short, but the introduction to it is too long. Uh, <laughs> you can. Uh, <coughs> I, was at, I stupidly agreed to something. Uh, I was asked to do a, a commission with some Canadian artists, and uh, the artist they, I was excited about it, and they sent me the artist who I was paired with, and I looked at her website, and um, I don't even know how to describe she, I mean, maybe you'll disagree, <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong, but did, did she made silk scarves, silk scarves, and like, her whole website was about like, how brightly cover, colored they were, and how vivid, and that they're really washable, that was a big <laughs> feature of the artwork, and... Uh, she seemed like a really lovely woman and stuff, but it was just a little bit. I, I think her main client was a, a local choir, uh, a local <laughs> boys' choir. You're right? Like it just, all right, so already I was a little bit dubious about the whole thing. And, uh, you know, they could really beef up your choir's appearance, she said. That was the, the selling point. Um, they're a good uniform. So, anyways. No, no disregard to scarves. They're lovely. I love them, uh, and, and their work is good. But what? 
Yeah, it's, or choirs. I love a good boy singing. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, so, and then she sent me the thing, and then it was like this, because it was about, you know, the UK and Canada and <coughs> transatlantic crossings and stuff, and she sent me this, 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 this image of a scarf with birds on it, and like, notes, you know, bass clefs and things, and, <laughs> and so I wrote this. <laughs> I flew many times, but never felt like a bird, nor an open sea of uncertainty, nor notes plucked from a cello, only heavy luggage in hold, awaiting the drag and spin of a rubber belt. I told you it was short. <laughs> and this last one. Uh, <laughs> Why is that so funny? It was too long. It was too long of an introduction. Wasn't it? I haven't used my seven minutes yet. Uh, so this last one uh, just has a quote from Alexander. It doesn't have a title. It just has a quote from Alexander. Ristovich, and the quote is, how many times will you do this or that without being aware of the time passing or the time that still remains to you? It was only a corner, and I turned it with more worry than normally I worry, as if that corner was the year of my death or a shadow of death which I've dreamed since I was a child, watching street lamps, dreaming of the day a car would forget to stop or I'd forget to look. And this was only a corner, one of many on a round earth, and the shadows that pass are only shadows of people waiting for the lights, checking their watches, or scanning for an acquaintance as I dream of my acquaintance, turning up as if by surprise, an expected surprise, sure, as the lights twitch back to green after a long red. Thank you.